They say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Baiters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen brought to you by... Woods Equipment Company has every tool you need to make working the land as rewarding as hunting. L81 Bottling Company. Taste, love, and share the tradition. Rose Farm Supply. Family farming and commitment to our customers since 1982. House warmings, meeting all of your outdoor living and fireplace needs. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Listen. You know what that is? Of course Rain. you do. Rain on a tin roof. Isn't that lovely? I like that. While we're cooking. You know what? We have a wonderful show for you today. We're going to cook some really yummy, tasty stuff. Now, gyro. It's a Love Greek them. recipe. It's absolutely wonderful. Listen, do you hear something? What is that? It's Greek music. I now, love Greek music. We've got a little bit of a Greek theme going on because Nikki is uh, your grandfather, as we see this picture right here. What was his name? Emmanuel Kalakarinas. And he was from the island of Kithria? Kithria, yes. He came across on the Carpathia right. to this country in 1913. To take care, to make money for his family because yeah. they were so poor. And you know, he came to Pennsylvania, opened a restaurant. Mm -hmm. He was a great cook. Yes, he was. And he had he kept those traditions alive. A lot of times when you're at the fair or you see a food truck and you smell right. these wonderful smells coming out, you couldn't think that maybe you could do this on your own kitchen because they have this big wheel of land that they slice it off of and they have you tzatziki sauce. You figured it out, sauce. didn't you? You figured it I out. I figured it out. Yes, you did. You can figure just about anything out, I promise you. I've got some Asian recipes that are just as good as... Which they are. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But on this show, it's all about um, lamb. Uh, we talked about getting lamb for the longest time. Guess what? We finally done it. We talked to Ken Cove. They came out. They showed us how to use their fence. That keeps the critters, bad critters out, good critters in. We're getting a new dog. We can move our fence. We're getting a new dog to watch the perimeter and keep an eye on them. We're finally going to do it because we like lamb. We really, really, really like lamb. Lamb, again, is one of the easiest red meats to digest. It's good for you. There's not a lot of fat in it. And it's absolutely one. If you have not tried it, Try some grub you've never tried before. We beg of you. You don't want to limit yourself to just one thing. I know I know some people that eat hamburgers and pizza. Right. Well, they've never tried it. They need to try it. They need to try it. Right. I had a lady ask me today, what does it taste like? Well, how would you describe lamb? I said it's like a richer beef. How would you describe it? It's its own, it's its own taste. You, right. But there are certain spices that really bring out the flavor and add to that and make it wonderful. So we're going to use that. Tonight. Now, there's a lot of places you can get lamb. Uh, look for Mark's Berry Products. Look for Four Hills Farm. You can find his stuff uh, over at Good Foods. Right. That's a great place to start to look. I'm telling you what. Tonight, I'm so happy to make this recipe. It's not that complicated. You know, when you fix a gyro, it's in pita bread. Right. Tell them about the pita. We made homemade pita. It's delicious. Uh -huh. And you actually make your bread out of Weisenberger flour. Right. Make your dough. Let it set. We'll get to that later. Okay, oh, whoa, listen, Greek music. What's that make you want to do? Dance. Let me see the Greek dance. My grandfather taught me this, you ready? Are you it. gonna join Go me? Ahead. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll join you. All right, you ready? I'm serious. Yeah. <laughs> what 
am I supposed to take Just this? dance. You must dance with me. Okay, let's get back up here and get back to the recipe part of this. Okay, now let's get right. Not that I didn't like your dance. It was great. That was me. But let's get to our meat. A lot of these recipes will call for half beef, half lamb. We don't play that. We go all lamb. I got two pounds of lamb. Wait a minute, before we get started. Before we get started. Look at here. This bottle right here is from Connie Cromwell. She was watching our show. She says, that bottle needs to be in your kitchen. It does. And so, it does. Isn't that beautiful? It I says, love it. It says, Grandma uh, Wheaton's Whole Milk, South Jersey's Best. And Grandma's on it. Grandma's on it with a little cow. And the bottle's actually made in Italy. It's beautiful. The pride and the workmanship that goes into just a bottle they used to bring your milk in is just fantastic. So that's going to be sitting think? right up here. I think, what do you think? Looks good. I like it. Perfect spot. I like it. That's where it's going to be. Let's get back to our lamb. Now here's where we're going to start. We're going to take our lamb and we're going to make a kind of a loaf out of this. So let's go ahead and start with, now we went out and got a little bit of rosemary fresh and a little bit of oregano, but we're going to go ahead and put some dry, it calls, calls for more dried stuff, but you can use some fresh too. You can chop that a little finer in the food processor, which Nikki's taken and going to put about a half an onion in there and a clove of garlic. Are those chopped up enough for you? Yep. So we've taken about a half of onion, a large garlic clove. Now we're going to take uh, some breadcrumbs. Okay. Now my hands are a mess, so I'll have you add them if you don't mind. How much I'm going to be working all this in. Uh, I'd say go ahead and put, if you had to measure this out, I never measure anything, but you're probably talking five or six tablespoons in here. Now come back with an egg. What would you like? How much time? Uh, about 15 minutes. All right, now each one of these ingredients that I'm going to mention, you're going to use about a teaspoon. Okay, go ahead. All right, now we're coming back with oregano. Now we're coming back with some marjoram. Now I like a lot of flavor, and these flavors all really enhance this. We're going to come back with some even more rosemary. Rosemary is, to me, one of the best things you can do with lamb. I'm going to come in with some black pepper. While we're getting this going and we're talking about black pepper, I want everybody to be on the lookout for this man. His name is Glenn Thompson, but he's responsible for a pepper shortage I heard that. in three continents. He's known as the pepper bandit. If you see him anywhere, ask him if he has your pepper. They say in his basement he has a ton and a half of black really? pepper. We need yeah. to go and take some. So keep your eyes out for the pepper bandit. His name is Glenn Thompson. Get any cumin in there. Give me some cumin. About like that. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to put this in the food processor. Just give that a spin until it gets nice and worked up. Now, salt and pepper to taste. I do like a lot of salt and a lot of pepper. And I'm gonna split that in half. And I have a roast pan over here. It has got hot water in it. We're gonna take one half of this, and make a little loaf out of it, plop that right in over here. And that water will kind of help keep the moisture in. And we're gonna cook that on 325 and at least for an hour. You want the internal temperature to be about 165 until it's not pink anymore, and you're gonna have you a nice loaf. And Nikki, I will open the oven, and there's that. But we got our lamb here, but we don't have them on the farm yet. Right. We talked to Janine Wishy a while back, went to her farm. She's got sheep, she's well ahead of the game. We're gonna get our sheep from her very shortly. She came out to the farm the other day to tell us what we need to do to get it ready. Janine Wishy. Tim Farmer, good to see you. We're taking little baby steps. Mm -hmm. Last time we were over to your house, and I was like, oh my gosh, this pastoral setting. I heard Beethoven, uh, <laughs> Sixth Symphony in the background over there. It's, there's something peaceful about that. Right. There's something wonderful about the process of raising your own meat, right. vegetables, so on and so forth. Right. This is where our piggies were. Mm -hmm. And now it's time to transition to sheep. That's what I'm talking about. All right. The pigs are up hanging out at the house in a very cold environment. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> they have arrived, as we <laughs> say. Arrived. Now, this is going to be this, our sheep pen. I see great potential with this in terms of handling. Hand, we talked a little bit about that or, uh, the last time. But you have the opportunity to move them around your entire property because mm -hmm. of the investment in the um, King Cove electro netting, right? And, and you also have these thickets that are dotted throughout the property that they will love because they'll love to eat this taller, you know, forage, weeds and brambles. I'd love for It'll them to clean eat it. it up for you, <laughs> exactly. It'll give them shade. 
Um, you know, one of the things that, that I think is important when it's shedding time in the spring of the year, since it's a hair breed, they, you know, they're going to rub, they'll love this, they'll rub on this. But if we don't have permanent fencing, um, woven wire in other areas of the property, they won't have that. But what you have are all these great thickets and they'll be able to rub against the trees to help facilitate getting um, that hair off. This is really a, a type of place where they would love. I yeah, I like the thickets, um, and that, that was the one of the conversations was this perimeter, permanent perimeter fence, and I don't think you need it as long as you can string your electronetting. Like I, I would want to include this for the sheep to eat the tall, you know, the weedy stuff because that's not where parasites are. Right. Um, the parasites are going to be in this lower grass and of course you'll be letting this grass grow. But since you can include this thicket into your electronetting, they'll have shade and then they'll have fun things to eat that mixes up their diet. I just see the potential of this movement that that you guys are setting yourself up for. Your land complements that. And you don't have to have a huge farm. We've got less than 20 acres. Yeah. But do you think it's maybe not too bad of an idea to maybe have a dog to I, think it's an, the, I, I think it's a wonderful idea to have. That idea. being said, do I need to bring them in with these these ones that I'm getting from you? Do I need to bring them in at the same time? Or? Um, I, you know, if, I think what's mo more important is just making sure you get a puppy. Mm -hmm. And the puppy is introduced to your sheep whenever, right? right? But just as a puppy. Because we have Baxter was one that came as an older animal. I mean, he was still a puppy even though he was enormous. Um, but he was like six months old, and we got Finca, you know, that, that in a little itty bitty puppy stage. And so they grow so fast. And I mean, you know how they say it about kids, my gosh, these animals, you know, from a cute little teeny uh, polar bear to like the huge polar bear. All right, we've talked about moving. Now I'm, we're on a completely different side of the farm. We talked about moving them over where the pig pen is over here. So basically, you can just bribe them. Yeah, they, like if you give them a little bit of a grain ration, even if you just give them a little cracked corn, um, you know, every evening, that will be something that when you walk out with your your bucket, they'll come running to you or you know wherever their it's candy. trough it's is. Something different. It's candy, exactly. And we we trained ours that way. We don't ha we don't regularly feed, but that's one way that you can build that. All right come this way. But the ability to move is probably important, pasture to pasture. How, how often or do you have to? I, with just I a few? generally do it once a week. Once a week. Um, with a, just a few, depending on how big your area is. So it's really just that, that observation. You know, I know that you, you and Nikki like to sit and watch the pigs, right? And you know, you've got, Redneck entertainment. You've got chairs strategically placed <laughs> in wonderful ways and where you can, too. yeah, you can like sit and observe and kind of sit and be with them so right. that they get to know you, kind of consider you, you know, trust you, that sort of thing. Basically, you move them once you see that the grass is getting, you know, too short because that's when you're going to start to see an, an, a higher potential incidence of parasite loads because that's where the eggs are and that's short grass. People are asking me all the time where they can get lamb. You, you, you actually sell them, right? Yes. And yeah. you know other folks who do. So if right. they want to contact you, yeah. at where can they get a hold of you at? Um, my email is jwishy at shelbybb.net. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming sure, Tim. out. Sure, Tim. Good to Thank see you. Thank you so much. You've got a great farm. I like that. Tin roof and rain. We would be outside cooking, but, you know, we're in the harvest cabin tonight. Yes, we are. And we're chilling. Now, we're going to make this tzatziki sauce, which goes over top of our pita bread and our lamb. Oh, Yummy. my goodness. Yummy. We take a little onions, and we'll get to that in a little while. But first of all, here's what we need. We need a cup and a half of Greek yogurt. All right. You can find that anywhere. You want the thicker stuff if you can find it. You want your tzatziki sauce to hold up and be fairly stout. We're gonna take a little bit of sour cream, about a quarter of a cup. We got our sour cream. Let's take a half a lemon. Now I'm gonna show you a little secret. Now, obviously they have seeds in them. If you'll take your lemon and, and cup your hand around it, you can squeeze wow. like that or even run it off your thumb. No seeds at all. That's good. We're gonna take that and mix it up. Now all this is gonna go in the food processor here in a minute. Uh, let's go ahead and take you know, about a good teaspoonful. Go ahead and peel the leaves off of this. Fresh dill is the best in the world. I'm gonna use a little dried dill as well. That really adds the taste. How much you want? Uh, a little bit more. more We're gonna get the total of at least a teaspoon, maybe a little bit more. We're gonna put that in the food processor. All right, and just full like that, yep, hold. Along with a clove of garlic. All right. And let's take a tiny bit of olive oil, put it in here. We're gonna take a little bit of vinegar. 
Probably about a cap full is fine. That'll give it just a little zing. Mix that up. Salt and pepper to taste. This is so easy. Now, we're gonna take that cucumber, gonna cut this up, and a lot of people wanna take the seeds out. The seeds do not bother me. Let's go ahead and cube that up, put that in the food processor. Okay, now let's go ahead and take our yogurt, sour cream, salt and pepper, put in there, and let's let it get nice and mixed up. All right, now we're gonna take our tzatziki sauce out, we're gonna pour it in this bowl, and we're gonna put it in the refrigerator for about two hours and let it firm up just a hair. Now, guess what? I'm heating a skillet up. We've got our large cooker out here. And there's a very easy recipe. First of all, you gotta start with some Weisenberger flour, and we're gonna make our pita bread. Tell us how we do it. What I do is take two teaspoons of the yeast, and we put a cup of warm water, and we let that dissolve for five minutes. Then I added two and a half cups of flour and two teaspoons of olive oil and two teaspoons of salt, and that's it. And we kneaded it for about, what, seven or eight minutes? Mm -hmm. I never stopped kneading it. We cut it into eight little pieces, I think that's what it made, that, and we already ate a couple of them, didn't we? Mm -hmm. And then we made these and we let them sit, they rose. So I'm gonna put you a little flour out, roll it out, and we'll show you how to make your pita bread. Go ahead and cut us up just a little bit of tomato, dice us up some tomato, okay. and cut us some real fine pieces of onion. Oh, we're getting so close. Our wine pairing tonight with our wonderful lamb treat is a Chrisman Mill Kentucky Grown Norton. All right, now, you know what pita bread looks like. When it starts to get browning up just a little bit, that's gonna try to bubble up on you. Just kinda knock those bubbles down. When you start getting nice and brown on either side, it's gonna be just perfect. Nikki, at this point, I've been letting the loaf set in the oven and stay warm. Bring that out, if you will. All right, now, Slice. there, I'm turning this off. Look at our pita bread. It's just perfect. That's the way your pita bread's supposed to look. I'm gonna set this right over here. All right, now we're gonna cut off some pieces, put those directly on our pita bread. All right, now we're gonna take our tzatziki sauce, spread that on our meat. We're gonna come back with a little bit of onion as the rain falls on the roof. Looks good. A little bit of lettuce. Put it out there, right there. And Looks guess good. what? A little bit more tzatziki sauce. Gonna fold that over. It's a big sandwich. And guess what? That what I'm talking about. You That's want, a you want the first bite? It's all you. That's good. I like that pita bread. Meat's delicious. Mm. Mm, yeah, I did yourself. Mm. Good. Very good. You know, a lot of people think about gyros as fair food. You're walking at the fair and you see the sign that says gyros and you smell heaven. That is heaven. There's nothing in this world that you can't make yourself in your own kitchen. Find the right ingredients and you're all over it. I'm you very happy yourself. with that. I am too, very good. All right, we're finishing up with a Greek dessert. Anybody who's had baklava, Yum. it's fantastic. I mean, it's so simple, really. I mean, it seems complicated, but you have honey, you have walnuts, in this case, pecans. We have right. pecans, sugar, nutmeg, cinnamon. cinnamon, and butter, phyllo dough, That is it. period. Right. Show us how to do this. And it's actually in our cookbook. Page 27. And I, and I, yes, in the cookbook it calls for wal walnuts and almonds, but you can do pecans instead. I like pecans. We like pecans so much. So what we have done, actually I have a cup of pecans here. Okay. And we are gonna add some nutmeg to this. We're gonna make our little sugar mixture. Now you've put your pecans through the food processor right. and we've melted a stick right. of butter. You can buy them like this too. Yeah. We had full pecans. So we're gonna put about a half a teaspoon of nutmeg. Let's do the same with the cinnamon. Now your family has always had this around, yes. haven't they? And everybody makes it a little bit different. Everybody, Uncle Bob makes it different, everybody does mm -hmm. their thing. We do it with a lot of honey. Some people make a sauce, we like honey. This is fresh local Kentucky honey, the Bee Dudes. Actually, Jay brought me this. This is That's good stuff. wonderful stuff. I think they're gonna start marketing their honey here. For really? Me. Yeah. It's good honey. About two tablespoons of sugar. And you know, it doesn't have to be exact, it's what you like. If you want it sweeter, make it sweeter. Mm -hmm. If you like more spices, make more spices, it doesn't really matter. 
And that's it. This is going to be our little mixture we put in the middle. This is and you've made easy. this 160 million oh, yeah. times. It's always absolutely wonderful. Best dessert ever. And you can buy this phyllo dough anywhere, usually Walmart, gotcha. Kroger's. It's just little thin, thin, thin layers. Like paper. Yeah. And we're going to make a small pan today. This, you see how it's kind of made for a 9 by 13 and mm -hmm. it's actually a little bigger. We're going to cut it in half and it's still going to be a little too big, but this stuff you can fold it. And I've melted one stick of butter. This is only one stick of butter. Some people like more. Right. If we run out, we can do more. And these sheets will break, so don't worry about it. Like this is too, and you kind of just, it's kind of like paper. I'm just going to do, put a little butter in between each one. So it's repetitive. Right. It's just layer after layer after layer. And usually I do about 10 sheets. And you see how it's, if I'm wrinkly, it doesn't matter, this stuff's going to flatten right down. So just butter on yeah. every layer. And we're going to go about 10 layers, and some of these are coming up in twos, and I'm just letting them, you see how it's kind of just fall. And if it breaks, it's almost just stick it back in there, it doesn't matter. So we have about 10 pieces here. And this is our mixture. Okay. So that's that's your base, about that's our 10 base. pieces with butter in between. So you see it's really good for you. So we're just going to put a little bit of this. See how simple? Start all over again. Starting all over. We're going to go 20 this time. 20 10, this time. 20, and then another 10 and done. We're going to do it again. Another layer of Another layer of our, of our nuts and our nutmeg and our sugar, cinnamon. You know, Greeks like to put nutmeg in a lot of stuff. And cinnamon. Yeah. So we're going to go another 10 sheets. Uh, you want to do that Greek dance again real quick? I think you should do it this time. You do the Greek dance. You need a cloth in your hand. I don't need a cloth. Don't you? Wow, that's really good. Wow. You hear that Greek music? I do. Where's the music coming from? I don't know. When you make Greek food, the Greek music just comes to you. <laughs> You're way better than me. All right, this is that's very good. This is the last layer, so let's go ahead and just let's put it all in there. Okay. And that's all it is. It's just this sweet stuff and dough and butter. So now this is the end. We're just going to go ahead and layer again what's left of our pieces. Now, when you cook this, before you cook it, do you pre-cut it or you Yes. Oh, you pre-cut it. You want to pre-cut it. It makes it way easier. If you try to cut it after, we'll pre-cut it and you're going to put a bunch of honey all over it. How long do you cook About it? About 50 minutes. 50 minutes? 50 minutes, yes. Okay. If it goes over a little, it's okay. It doesn't do a whole lot to it, but 50 minutes is plenty. How much honey? Coat it. You mean, Load you mean it. seriously? Oh, yeah. I co totally cover it. It says half a cup of honey in the recipe, but half I bet cup. we use way more than that because you use what I don't you know. want. I'd say, I'd you think say a little? that's about right. right. That looks Is that really about good. Right? Yeah, it looks perfect. And that's I'd say it. It was that much honey. You used a lot of honey, but it's going to be your, yours is going to be good baklava. Right, let's pop that's it in the it. oven. I smell honey that's heaven. Good. You ready? This, this is the best dessert in the world. It is actually. Now, there's no law against uh, putting more honey on when it comes out, you right? Can, you love your honey, you put more honey. You can see it's nice and crisp. Oh man, look at that. So I'm just going to take just a little bit. <laughs> That's good. As it continues to rain. This is the most honey I've ever seen on baklava. It's going to be the best ever. There's nothing wrong with honey. Now you will have to cut this again. See how I'm having to cut through a little mm -hmm. bit? You have to play with it, but let's go ahead and want it. You're too hungry for me to cut all these, aren't you? Yeah. Let's go ahead and get one out of there. I want that piece right there to really? tell you the truth. I don't know why, but that one's just looking at me. Look at that right there. Look at that from the side. About hot. See how that layers up? See the looks like a little candy bar. Alright, let's cool down a little bit. How is it? You like oh, your extra, you like your extra honey? What that could make a candy bar on that. I know. This is everybody's favorite Christmas dessert too. Mmm. Baklava. And if this looks really good to you, we got all kinds of recipes on timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. Check it out. Look at this stuff maybe you haven't seen before. And then go to our Facebook page and like it, Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. That's delicious, Nikki. Why did you like it? You've always liked it. You're going to eat, re eat the rest, aren't you? Probably. Okay. It's all about good times, good friends, and good eats. We'll see you next week on Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. To order a cookbook or DVD of the show, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com. Chrisman Mill Vineyards. Good Foods Co-op. Kinco Farm Fence Supplies, Kentucky Beer Cheese, Polecat Custom Smokers, Tater Knob Pottery and Farm, Weisenberger Mill, 
and Tim Farmer Productions. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen brought to you by Kentucky Sheep and Goat Development Office. Try something different tonight. Salt Rocks, the flavor of life. Harvest Energy Solutions, Harvest Cabins, when you absolutely have to get away.